Hello my friends, how are you today? This is a new video about the Korg Grand Stage. This is a first review. I guess there will be more because today I want to concentrate on the pianos because after having Kawai MP7SE, my main issue, my main goal, let's say, on a keyboard is the pianos and how authentic and good they are sound. <coughs> Sorry. So anyway, this, this review is... Um, I bought this piano second hand. It was in a good price. So I bought it second hand. And I always wanted uh, to have the Kronos pianos, you know, and uh, this got all of Kronos pianos and uh, it's got uh, a hybrid one that mix all of the pianos together to one sound. They made a hybrid piano. Anyway, there are five concert grand here. Five concert grands from five different companies, the most famous in the world. So the first one is Fazioli. The second one is Tenway D. They call it here the German piano and the Fazioli is the Italian piano. The third one is Yamaha, I guess, the CFX or the CF3. The fourth one is Beckstein. It's warm and old sounding. And the last one is the Borsendorfer. With whom I was opening the video. The sample here are gorgeous. As I understand, there isn't a looping here, so it's full sampled. Like if you are hearing this bass, it's sampled from a piano and all the way until the end. So there isn't any looping here. And there is, as I, as I told, 18 layers, 18 layers, an average stage piano even on the higher level, got six, seven, eight layers maximum, not 18. 18 only, only VSTs on the computer have 18 layers. And this one is just like a VST, and it's got internal hard drive, I guess SSD, with 64 gigs of space, and I think 32 gigs are used by the sounds inside so there is a 32 gigs free but sadly now the pianos here are very bright i have to say so even though there are dark patches here of the same pianos but to make the piano dark they are cutting the high frequency so it's not really mellow piano, it's just a bright piano that cut, that someone cut his head, like, let's say it like this, so. So, and I like the, the piano sound and I don't want the tweaked piano sound, so what I did is using the velocity curve and take it it one down from the normal to three like heavy uh, curve so i'm getting the more mellow samples from the bottom of the layers let's say so i get this the the real piano sound that was recorded but the the more gentle layers 
And if I will push the keyboard very hard, I will get to the bright layers, let's say, but, but this is giving you more dynamic, even though there is a dynamic option here, but in the dynamic option, it's too easy to get to the bright samples. And uh, I don't want a mix. I want it to be most of the time on the mellow sound. And just when I'm pushing it hard to be a little, little bit bright, but not more bright than the normal, of course. And the wide option here makes you, when you're pushing the key action, more bright than the normal. And the normal is pretty bright already for me. Too bright. So why, why they sampled so bright pianos because if you if you are using vst pianos today you know that the vsts the the pianos today also not on vsts on the real world going towards the mellow sound even yamaha that was famous for uh, making their pianos very bright lately start to change if you go to almost Almost all the pianos on Spotify, the, the pianos uh, 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 playlist, you will hear most of them with the felted piano and felted sound. So why, why is it like this here? So this is my opinion, my personal opinion. My personal opinion, because the... Korg is very old, old school, let's say. They are a, one of the giant of the past, let's say, say it like this. And uh, they was the ruler uh, at the 80s and 90s on PlayStations and uh, 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 workstations, sorry, on workstations and synthesizers and at the 80s and the 90s, the moda was the, you know, the consensus was bright pianos. So in most of the record on the 80s and the 90s, and even the beginning of the 2000, is bright pianos. And as I'm guessing, these pianos was sampled 10 years ago, even more because they got out with the Kronos. Maybe the only one maybe is not the, the Fazioli. The but uh, these samples are very bright. So to get to the uh, more mellow uh, uh, samples, you have to tweak the, the velocity curve of the uh, key action. And then you are playing mostly the low, the low uh, layers, the more gentle layers of the samples. And this is how I get this sound because on the normal, and of course I'm using the dynamic knob to make it even more mellower. So I take it the left almost all the way, maybe one, two, lines above the maximum dynamics. Uh, so this is the, as I told you before, this was the this was the Bosendorfer. Now I go to back to the Fazioli, the Italian. So this piano got the best variety, let's say, and the sample size in the business. The samples are bright, so the style of the pianos are uh, uh, not of today. Uh, and I will do a comparison 
but not in this video, between the pianos here and VST from the same companies that I got on my computer. So you will hear the sound of today's pianos and the pianos here. Anyway, the samples are marvelous, as you can hear. they call it hybrid piano and the, the, the first one they call them they call them the name of the patch is the grand stage piano and this is a hybrid between all the five concert grand pianos so the Fazioli the Stanway D the Yamaha CFX I guess the Beckstein A I don't know the name of the models in the Beckstein and the uh, Bosendorfer, I guess, 280, 290, I don't know. One of these. So this is the mix of them all. can hear it it's it's wonderful piano to my taste my personal taste the samples here of the pianos only the pianos need need a refresh and I know Yamaha did uh, add samples to their pianos but uh, as I understand Korg is not planning to do this they are adding tweaks because here you cannot change the patch too much and they added the uh, like you know dark pianos bright pianos of each version of this uh, g uh, grand pianos but I like to control the amount myself and uh, And I guess they need uh, more gentle pianos. This is too, too aggression. On a band situation, they are too aggression and uh, on solo performance, I guess they are good. But they are catching very wide spectrum of the frequency on the mix, you have to you have to understand that and uh, they are grunchy, let's say. They are not uh, mellow enough to my test. And when I will do a comparison video between this, each one of this piano and uh, equivalent one on VST, you will hear how the pianos of today are much more mellow than the pianos here on the default on the default setting yes so um now now i won't prove it because i want now when you are getting used to this piano there is a magic happening and the magic is because the sound is very similar on the you know bright versus mellow they all sound almost the same brightness. Then if you are concentrated and you have to use good headphones, very, very good headphones, if you can concentrate, you, you will listen to the difference 
that came that coming from the wood itself from each piano so I will try to do it with you on many registers of the piano okay and let's start with the fazioli and compare it to the Stenway D again fazioli Stenway D Fazioli Stanway D Now on the bass register you will hear the difference pretty good This is the Fazioli and this is the Stanway See the Fazioli is more uh, warm and uh, dark and the stainway is more bright and fuller and with character and on the middle there is a difference again the fazioli is a little bit more darker because the, fa the fazioli is, is their latest sample they added to the chronos so the Italian piano so because it's more up to date, it's more mellow. And the stairway also is mellow, pretty. The Yamaha, listen to the Yamaha and the stairway. Fazioli, they sound on the higher register almost the same. Yamaha. Stanway Fazioli Fazioli Stanway Yamaha But on the bottom register you can hear the difference Fazioli Stanway Yamaha Yamaha Stanway, Fazioli, Bergstein, Bosendorfer, Bosendorfer, Bergstein, Yamaha, uh, Stanway. So Fazioli, the, there is a very subtle difference between this piano. The most, uh, the most different one is the Beckstein because it's, it's mellow and it's got, it's got an old sound, so it's very intimate piano. There is two uprights here, and the uprights doesn't get the string resonance. One of them, the first one, there is a string. By the way, all the pianos here have got a string resonance, and you can adjust the amount of, that you want of the string resonance. I put it on 50%. This is the upright. second upright 
this one without the string resonance. So I'm thinking about if you use if to use compressor with this video because there is a bit there is a large, large difference on the volume between the so as you can hear that the the upright pianos here are marvelous too so If to compare it to the kawaii, just the piano, not the other features, just the piano. I like the, the kawaii pianos, the, my older MP7SE pianos are more warm and more uh, sound authentic than this. Like not more authentic, more, more 2020, let's say. The pianos are more... more similar to the VSTs of today. There are many patches here, so even though you cannot tweak the sound too much, but you've got, uh, let's say, uh, if you want uh, the fazioli, this is the fazioli. And, sorry, and this is the... fazioli dark, okay? string resonance and these dark patches lately with this uh, with the upgrade to the to the firmware so they they try they trying to modify the their pianos This is the Yamaha Mellow. And 
This is the Berlin, the Berlin, the Bergstein. It's already mellow piano. The last one, the balls and of Fermelo. But you can see that on the bass, because this is just to cut frequency, so on the bass, it stays very bright. This is not mellow piano. So I prefer it my way to use the, the natural sampling of the piano and to make it mellow by messing with the touch curve. So this is my review. I think this piano is marvelous. First of all, there isn't any equivalent piano with so much space. For sampling on it like this one and I guess there, there are more than 10 gigs here only the pianos okay so no no other company can can race it but I can, I do think that they need to refresh the piano samples here uh, about about the e pianos here they are the best I ever heard on any other company. So the e-pianos here are uh, one of the highlights of this. Uh, but me personally, I like the pianos more. So I'm looking for a piano that is smooth and soft that can be good on a live gigging with band and uh, uh, won't disturb too much the, 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 the frequencies of the other uh, instruments. And these pianos are not very good at that, let's say, because they are very thick. The sound is very thick because it's based on very bright pianos, you know, very very uh, characterful, let's say, pianos. And uh, so for solo pianos, they are good. But me personally, I like more the, the kawaii mellowness and the darkness, natural, the natural darkness of a dark piano over a uh, uh, bright pianos like here but still i already got it so i'm i'm pretty enjoying the pianos here and this is the end and uh, the next time i will talk about uh, other aspects but you know what few words about uh, this uh, gigging keyboards because this keyboard is better for gigging than the kawaii mp7 se the ease of use the ease of splitting the keyboards the kawaii you have to determine each section where it begins where it ends and to go back to full f uh, one instrument uh, a full keyboard uh, from splitting, you have to do it before, you know, with the, with the favorite buttons there, or uh, just to... It will take you time. This is more gigging ready instrument. The other sound, except the pianos, here are better than the kawaii. The downside here that there is only two zones if you are all, all split or one layer, but this that's all. 
But as I understand, this is what's going on on the better companies. Like, I don't, I don't want to say better, but the CP88 and the YC88 also have two or maybe three zones, but that, that's all. And uh, they all are imitating the Nord, but I think this is got out to the world before the Nord or maybe after, but this is very stagey piano. And it's not very heavy, like the Kronos, you know, it's only 20 kilos. It's three kilos less than the Kawai MP7 SE. And it's two kilos, one and a half kilo above the Yamaha CP88 and YC88. Uh, so... It's uh, in the middle, you know, it's not the the heaviest and it's not lightest but it's probably much more light lighter than the Kronos and it's got the Kronos engines so the engines here are pretty amazing and the sounds here the other sounds except the pianos are pretty amazing and pretty up to date I have to say not like the Modix, I used to have Modix. The Modix is a little bit more up to date than this, sound wise, but uh, the sounds here are more thorough. You know, the pianos here have more layers, more everything. You know, the, the Yamaha is a pretty small size uh, of sampling. I don't know how they are doing it, but they have two, maybe three gigs internal, four gigs maximum, I don't know how much. But the other companies like Dexibel, the other companies is with one, two gigs. Dexibel, I think four gigs. But this one got 64 gigs, so they've got place for uh, more thorough samples. So the sounds here are sound more authentic than my Modix 8 was. But the sound there, sound is is more, you, you've got more motion and, uh, you know, it's more up to date, the sound of the Mod X8. But the pianos here, I like them more because of the string resonance and the, 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 the samples here are more, uh, more deep, I have to say, more deep. Then they are, maybe it's, it's the engine, but also, I want to talk about the key action. The key action here is the second best I ever played after the Kawai. And I used to have RD800, so I know what is the PH4 feels like, so I know the RD88 key action. It's not even the concert PH4, it's the regular PH4. And this action feels much more better. And the, the only action top this is the Kawai, and I used to have Yamaha CLP 535, and I used to have Yamaha Modix 8, it's got the GHS, like the P125 in Yamaha, and I know that the Yamaha, the wooden action, it's only the white key, have wood, it's very heavy, like on the P515 and the YC88 and the CP88, it's got a wooden action, but it's very heavy, it's it's 10, 15 grams, at least more than a regular piano. I heard it's coming to 90, even 90 grams, 85, 90 grams, when a regular piano is only 55 grams. And this one is 65, 70 grams. But the Yamaha is above 70, 80 grams, the key action. So it's very heavy. And what do you care about heaviness? After playing one hour on a band with a heavy instrument, your hands will show the signs. They will get very fatigued and uh, it won't be fun. So I don't know why most of the companies making the action much more heavier than a regular piano. I don't know why, but this is the situation. The only companies that make the action the same heaviness as a regular piano are kawaii and 
רולנד, בת רולנד איץ סלאגיש, איץ נוט פילינג ג'אמפי לייק אריב פיאנו, בת קוואי דאז, דה מוסט סימילר לצי, אקספט דה ורי אקספנסיב דיגיטל הייבריז, הום, you know, like ימה, אנד קוואי, אנד איבן קאסיו, with their hybrid pianos. So this is a regular piano, so it's, it's supposed to weigh the same, but this, these pianos are very heavy. And uh, with the Mod X8, I'm, I was playing for one hour and my hand was killing me. And here it feels more natural and it's not so fatiguing. It's more fatiguing than, than the Kawai, of course, but... Still, it feels good, and the durability of this action is very good. That's why they are using this action for 12 years, I heard. This RH3, they are not uh, replacing it. So they've got it on the D, D1, their, uh, their uh, stage piano, their, their entry level stage piano D1. And here and on the Kronos and on, uh, I guess, on their uh, uh, home digital pianos, the, if they've got a good, uh, uh, I guess, the best action. This is, I guess, the best action they've got on Corb. And it's pretty good. So if you've got winning horse, don't change it. It's pretty good. It, it, it was better if it was more light. 10 grams lighter and it was a weight of a regular piano. But I don't know, psychologically, I think people like it heavy because the Fatar action is very heavy. That's why I didn't buy the Numa X piano and I didn't buy the Dexibel and I didn't buy, bought many films because they all use the, the Fatar action and the Fatar action is very, very, very heavy. It's like the Yamaha, even more. And I don't know why people like it so heavy, but me no, I, I like uh, the weight of a regular piano. I, I like the best the weight of the Kawai uh, ES110 I used to have. It was the most bouncy and, and good feeling uh, uh, keyboard I ever had. And, but it wasn't uh, reliable and uh, after, uh, after six months it started to ticking and clicking the ES-110, the action on the middle. And here on, and on the Kawai MP7, it's got the, the same name of action, RH3, both of them. This is RH3 of Korg, also Japanese. And the RH3 of Kawai is another RH3L, and it's better RH3. And it's durable as this one, I think. It's pretty durable. They had some issues with the RH2 at the beginning of the RH3, but they fixed it, and uh, I was playing, and I'm playing pretty much. I'm playing a lot, I mean, on the piano, so I'm... Uh, 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 pretty much hitting my, my key action thousands of times a day. So if it's not good, like the GHS on the Modex also have ticks, just like the Kawai ES-110. They have ticks, they have, uh, you know, you need to oil them, to grease them, so they will be quiet again. And this one, this one not. This one is not, this one is good. And also the Kawai MP7, I had it for almost two years and not a sound. It sounds good. It was perfectly fine when I sold it. And uh, the truth is that I miss my Kawai. But this instrument helped me with my... Uh, Because the amount of the pianos, you know, we, the freaks of the pianos, we like to have all of the pianos. And here you've got 
all the best brands on the world, the Fazioli, listen to the sound. Listen to the sound of the Stanway. Listen to the sound of the Amar. Listen to the sound of the Beckstein. Last but not least, the Bose and Offer. So as I told you, if, you if, if it was the perfect piano for me, And then they need to change the patches, the bass patches, to more mellow pianos. And that's all. I like this instrument as is. Also with these patches, I like it, you know, but if I want to be perfect, and not, not nine, to give it 10 in my scores. So at the piano, I think I like the kawaii better. Even though the Kawai has only Kawai pianos there, but the samples of the Kawai pianos and the connection with the key action is unparalleled. But this is, for my test, taking the second place after the Kawai. more than the other, more than the Yamaha or the, of course, the Roland. I don't like the Roland piano sound at all. Uh, so Yamaha, Roland, uh, the other pianos, uh, I don't want to touch because, because the heavy action, you know. So... Because even if you've got the best sounding piano in the world, but after one hour you can't play it anymore because your hand is aching, what good it is, you know? So I don't care about the others, but there is a piano that I'm very interested in it because of the weight of the keys. And the technology behind, and this is the Casio PXS 1000 or, one, or 1100 or the 3000 or the 3100. It's the same for me. They didn't really upgrade it. It's the same instruments almost. So I already bought, bought myself uh, the Casio because... Usually I'm, I'm, I'm in the studio I'm usually playing my uh, my uh, VST instrument, my uh, native instrument uh, pianos. So I'm looking for lighter action, but durable. And as I understand, between the Kawai ES110, the Yamaha P. 125 and the Casio I think the action of the Casio is the most durable than them all and uh, I hope to be right because this is as a gigging pianist in in a band the durability of the action is top priority and the sound of the piano the other things less and I care and the uh, uh, the PXS 3000 or the 3100 got a pitch band and mod wheels so it's pretty good as a as a, a MIDI 
MIDI keyboard because you can control with this thing so the only downside it doesn't have a, a audio over USB like the Yamaha and the Roland the P125 and the Roland the um, the Roland I forgot the name FP, F, FP30X and the 60X and the 90X all of them and all of the Yamaha's they've got a, a, a audio interface built in also all the keyboards with fatar like uh, 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 dexibel and uh, numa the studio logic numa x pianos and all of them have a audio interface but the casio don't have so this is a downside for me with the casio but the action is the, the, the priority here. And if the action is good, even half as good as, as the ES110, but more durable, then it's a jackpot for me because the uh, Stenway D on the Casio PX is 1,000 and 3,000. And the samples there are marvelous and they they take they took them from their flagship a hybrid piano the Stenway did there the, they call it the Hamburg piano so they they didn't cut uh, on the piano side on this uh, on this instrument and better than this you can adjust the string resonance the damper noise the hammer noise on the Casio and here you can't, only on the, I guess maybe on the Kronos you can, but here you can trigger it on and off, but you cannot control the amount of this uh, little quirky sound of the piano that today it's very popular, you know, the sound, this this uh, this sound of 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 the internal of the piano so this is the end of my review i think uh, that the casio is going to be my new best friend because of the weight and the action and if the piano sound is good this is all I want good action good uh, MIDI keyboard uh, 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 lightweight and uh, durability and light action not not heavy action so this is my uh, my thought I was uh, sharing it with you and this is a great uh, a stage piano and uh, a great studio piano for the pianist because you've got here a, a variety of pianos, of the best pianos in the business. So, in fact, if you have this, it's just like the SV2, but more pianos and more options and more sounds. But uh, on a boxy, on a boxy, uh, uh, boxy look, not a, 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 a round look like the SV2. But the SV2 took pianos from here, so it's supposed to be the same pianos. But I guess on the SV2, they make them a little bit less brighter because of the age, you know. But they are saying it's the same piano from the grand stage and the corners on the SV2. So there you've got it. Thank you and uh, register to my channel if you are in the piano business or hobby. And uh, soon enough I will make more videos of this piano and uh, I guess the new Casios that are on the way here in the few weeks to come. Thank you and uh, I, we will get in touch. 
you can contact me if you have questions about pianos and digital pianos uh, I put my link uh, on the description link for whatsapp so if you want to ask questions and everything thank you and have fun bye bye